Hi everyone, I'm Mike. This is the Sunday Art Show. And this week I'm going to take you through a real-time demo of a painting of four black cattle. OK, well, the colours I'm going to start off with today are conventional acrylic paint. Titanium white, fluorescent pink, yellow, blue and red. Cadmium red and cadmium yellow. To be honest, I'm probably only going to use these last two if for some reason I can't make things work with the others. And then the brush I'm going to use is just this old, fairly beat up and frayed decorator's brush. So here's my loose line drawing done with watercolour marker of four of the cattle. And I've chosen this composition because I just like the way I feel it leads the eye across the painting in a kind of diagonal arc. Now, my plan is not to replicate the scene exactly. In fact, what I hope to do is create a reasonably realistic cattle or as realistic as I get, but with some vibrant colours within the black. And then the background, I want to suggest in a somewhat abstract way, the hedgerow, the grass, the shadows, and I want a little bit of sky just peeking through. So let's get going with the sky. So what, what I've done so far is grabbed just a little bit of the white and you can see I've got it really very runny with water. And I'm just going to grab a little corner of that blue and mix that in. So I've got a very pale blue. Let's go, grab just a touch more. Hopefully you can see that on camera. There we go. OK, so it's very, very runny. And my plan for the background is I want my brush, this kind of frayed decorator's brush, to do as much of the work for me as possible. OK, so you can see how runny the paint is. And I'm just going to put a little corner of sky up there on the top right. Now, those runs that I've got here, I'm not overly concerned about. Um, I perhaps you know, wouldn't have made the, the easel quite as steep if I'd known the, the paint was going to run down that rapidly, but I'm not I'm not too worried. And the little bubbles, that's kind of cool. That's what I want. Now into that watery mix of blue that I've still got left on my palette, I'm going to grab some of the fluorescent yellow. Let's get a bit more. And maybe even a little bit more. And that's going to give me a, a really pale green. OK, so I'm just going to sweep this across the foreground to begin with. So let's start by putting a line straight across there. And I've done that to create kind of a little bit of a perspective line. But then I have to remember that this is, you know, grass that I'm depicting. So let's roll the brush across the foreground here and into that perspective line. And then I'm going to tap the brush at different angles here. Some more twists of the brush. And you can see the watercolour marker is kind of beginning to mix in as well. And then we'll scumble down here in this bottom right corner. And I don't need to worry if I go over my, my drawing at all. That will remain vis visible enough, you know. So the main thing is to cover the white. Let's get a little bit more yellow. So let's change the colour again. So really what I'm doing is creating a series of random marks different textures and subtle variations in colour as I move across the foreground. Now for the background hedges I want to change the colour again a little bit so so let's keep this pale green we've got going. I'm just going to grab a little bit of water here. Just dip my brush in the water. So let's add a little bit more blue touch more. So now I've got a, you know, a, 
pale pale green so let's use a similar technique for the background hedgerow obviously that's going to come right up to the sky and overlap a little bit I can again move my brush in different ways but the bubbling of this very fluid paint when that dries that will sometimes give me a really nice texture that is difficult to replicate in any other way. Now, what, you, what I want to avoid doing is having exactly the same colour for the hedgerow everywhere. So let's put a little bit more of the blue in. As we come this way, while the paint is still wet, we can mix little bits in. So things are changing colour a touch. And then let's change colour again. Let's grab a little bit of the fluorescent pink. Let's see what that's done. So that's quite nice. That's quite good. Let's do a little bit more of that. So I've gone, you know, way over to the, towards the browns and the magentas now. Again, it's easy to fall into the trap of doing the same pattern of marks over and over. So just going to sweep some of that colour. Add some little bits here into the sky. And then we can go a little bit darker again. So let's go blue and magenta. Paint's getting a little bit thicker. Add a little touch of the yellow. And then I'm not a huge fan of that colour, but um, a few little touches here and there I think are OK. And then let's grab some more of the pink. perhaps a bit more yellow. Let's see if we can make something closer to an orange. I may have to clean my brush actually. That might be okay. Let's see. That's okay but it's a little bit um, a little bit thick for what I want to do so just spraying the water palette, uh, the paint palette with water. And then, the, and then the next thing I want to do is use a similar technique, but with a slightly smaller brush. I just want to block in some of these cast shadows that are on, are on the ground. OK, so I've switched to my one inch wide brush now and uh, let's grab some of that blue. I've still got a little bit of the water in the corner of my palette, so let's grab a little bit of that blue and mix it in to the paint that I had there already. A little bit of the yellow. Let's get a little bit more water in there. And this is going to be a reasonably pale colour for, you know, a cast shadow, but um, that's OK. It's still going to be a nice translucent layer. And what's happening is, as I'm kind of moving my brush quickly, it's giving me a nice jagged edge to the end of the brush stroke so that's kind of I'm hoping going to help me create the illusion of blades of grass
um, in the field. Now, the watercolour marker is showing through and I don't think I mind that too much. Um, I think that's going to hopefully end up being quite a nice little effect come the end of the painting. So I strayed into part of the palette which gave me a slightly redder mix there. That was an accident, but I, again, I don't mind that change of colour. So we'll, we'll keep going with that. But then I will switch back to something a little more greenish as I make my way over to the left. Now, the shadows themselves, the cast shadows, they are in reality much darker. But for the moment, I think I'm content to leave things like that. So the next thing I want to do is block in the cattle. Now, looking at the, the colour of these you know, beautiful animals, uh, there are some very, very dark shadows and I want to go really dark with the shadows and with the colours that I had on my palette so far there's no way I'm going to be able to go dark enough so what I've done is add some cadmium red, burnt umber and ultramarine blue. So my next stage is to, I'm going to go you know work along each animal but I'm just going to add what I see to be the darkest shadows so if I take some of the ultramarine blue and some of the burnt umber and this time you can see I'm still using the same brush, but I'm hardly using any water. This paint is pretty much just straight out of the tube. Yeah, my brush is a little damp. OK, so that's mixed me up a nice dark colour. So let's start with the with the steer on the left. So this ear uh, is very, very dark. So I'm reasonably happy with the shape of that ear. So I'm going to begin by... blocking that in fairly carefully and if my underlying drawing shows through then that, that's absolutely fine with me. There's a bit of dark shadow there. The right hand side of the head there's a line of dark shadow coming down there and then the left ear is not entirely in dark shadow but that right hand side of it is. And there's also a bit on the end of the ear. And then the left side of the top of the head here is pretty dark. And then there's some shadow around the eye. And on the left side of the face, underneath the mouth and the front of the chest is pretty darn dark as well. So let's put that in. And the shadow on the right hand side of the head does kind of continue in a little bit there. So we'll, we'll put that in. There's also some shadow here. Kind of got, got myself a little bit lost there, but so that, that the shape of that dark shadow isn't quite right. I think I'll, ext I'll extend it there. This part of the animal is very dark too. And then by the time we get down to the, the legs, they're almost completely immersed in shadow, except for a little patch of highlight on the left hand leg. On the underside of the belly, it's very dark as well. And then it's very dark up here. Just curving my brush stroke slightly 
so that you know I'm starting to create a sense of that rounded torso. And then a little bit higher up, you know, things are getting a bit lighter. So I'm just going to kind of dry brush in that area for now. It's a little kind of triangular shadow in there as well. So that will do for the moment. Let's put a bit of dry brush there. So for that first animal, that's OK. OK, so now we move across to the next animal. Same mix of blue and um, burnt umber. And things are some very dark shadow on the left side of the hind quarters there. There is kind of a dark patch of shadow, roughly that shape there. And it's fairly dark down here too. And then again, we look at the, the head. There's a little line of shadow there. It's a little triangle of shadow uh, there on the top left of the head. This part of the ear is in shadow too, but the, there's a little patch of light. A little line of shadow down there. The left side of the head is in very dark shadow. This right ear, just like the previous animal, is almost completely blacked out. There's some shadow there on the hindquarters. Shadow around there, very dark around the outline of this uh, third animal in from the left. So that's going to help us define the, that animal. So let's make this dark in here too. The front of the, the nose and mouth is very dark. There's a line of shadow down there. A little bit of shadow around the eye, which I've just kind of messed up a bit, but again, we can correct that later. And then this part of the chest is very, very, very dark. So once again, the, the tops of the legs are very much in shadow. So they're almost silhouettes, really. But they do get, you know, a little bit lighter as they come down towards the ground. So I'm just going to leave that blank for the moment. Now, when we come across to this next animal, there's a little bit more going on. So in particular, this ear is, is dark. There is some shadow here. The other ear, it's a bit more difficult to see what's going on, but there's some darkness there. And then there's quite an interesting cast shadow, which kind of comes this way. It's a little bit of a change in direction, comes down and then across the, the snout there. There's a little bit of shadow coming down there too. There is a line of shadow here on the neck and here going around kind of the curve of the, the cheek. There's also a dark line of shadow under there. Top of the leg, very, very dark. And then having trouble seeing what's going on. There's so much in shadow, but hang on a sec. What we'll do is, yes, yeah, so the top of this leg is dark. That shadow actually comes down a little bit further. And even a bit further. And then as it proceeds over the chest, it kind of curves around there a bit. And 
then makes its way up the side of the animal. And then curves a bit and then it kind of peters out somewhat. So I'll go to a little bit of dry brush there. Now let's move back up here towards the hindquarters. It's not super, super dark up here, but it, it, you know, it's still pretty dark. So I'll kind of half dry brush, half opaque in that shadow. And then along the top of the back, there's also some darkness. And that's probably enough for that one. Um, but having said that, before we move on to this last animal, let's um, let's make these legs which are peeking through. Very dark. And then there is also uh, another cast shadow kind of coming from the tip of this ear down along there. And I haven't got the shape of those shadows quite right, but again, it's a first step towards getting where getting towards where we want to be so on to this last steer then let's block in that ear scumble in a little bit of shadow there and that went a little bit wild not quite what i wanted to do and then from the other ear there's a curved shadow there And then again from behind the ear there's quite a nice shaped shadow there a line of shadow going along the i guess that's a big muscle in the neck it's a fairly dark line of shadow along there underneath the the jaw and then we come down to the front of the chest here And again, this leg is pretty dark. And the other leg, which is just peeking into frame, uh, isn't quite as dark actually. It's dark on the edges, but it's not, uh, it is catching a little bit of light. And the front of the chest here is very dark. And then if we come back up to the top of the animal, there's a dark bit of shadow down there as well. Okay, so I've mapped now, I've basically created a little shadow map. Uh, so and that started to create a se some sense of three dimensions. And it, the, the much higher contrast I've got going on is starting to make the animals stand out from the background. But obviously, you know, I need to do quite a bit more. And the first step of that quite a bit more to do is to take some pure ultramarine blue. And this is naturally, you know, a little bit translucent, so I don't have to add much water really and I'm going to use that to block in the rest of these animals so as I you know as I apply this obviously it's darkening the, the white of the paper but I can also drag it over the the shadow color that I just put down um, and that's going to further darken the first layer of paint, but it's also going to soften the transition between the light and the dark. So I'm both building up a depth of tone in the shadow and kind of automatically softening the transitions within each 
of the stair. You know, and again, I can keep my brush strokes moving in the, the right general direction because when you apply the paint in a thin way with, with the flat brush, you get all these little lines created from the individual bristles. So you're automatically painting little contours into, into your subject. So why not use those contours to help create, you know, a 3D effect? So I think, you know, a lot of painting is getting the brush to do the work for you when you can. That's, you know, essentially what I've been doing earlier on with the background painting. You know, I didn't paint any of these little dots or any any of those little shapes really. The, the, brush, the brush did all the work, the frayed decorator's brush. And you know, really there isn't all that much there in the background, but my hope is uh, by the time I've finished the animals and taken them to you know a higher level of detail and finish. Um, that that background will just act as an environment you know, that they occupy and it will kind of sink into the distance a little bit and just help create a sense of space around the animals. Now, I mentioned earlier that, uh, or I think I did, I hope I did, that uh, I plan to include you know different colors within the blacks and obviously there's no evidence at all of that uh, in the painting so far I'm using exactly the same two colors across all four of the steer uh, and that's quite deliberate at this stage because although I do hope to perhaps for the sake of argument I'll have some blue highlights on this one some red on this one some purple on this one and so on I still want a certain amount of colour harmony uh, across the entire work so that it's not too jarring and uh, you know consequently blocking in with with two just the same two colours initially that's kind of a good way to go I feel but you can see just how much this little application of this thin layer of blue, it really does darken the initial sh uh, shadows you know, far more than perhaps you know, one might expect if you hadn't tried it yourself. So I can also use this blue where I, where I deliberately haven't painted in the edges of the, the legs. Applying the blue adds a little soft highlight. So we move across to the fourth and final animal. Now, what I'm thinking is while I've got this uh, blue on the go and having, um, you know, blocked in those four, I think what I'll do is I'll use the same blue, just applied perhaps a little bit more thinly 
to enhance um, some of these cast shadows a little bit. So, for example, so as you've probably heard, I just sprayed the, the blue on the palette with water and just darken the shadow there. Where uh, that steer's leg meets the ground. And then perhaps a little bit here. So I'm going to remove some of the paint from my brush actually and just get a bit more water in there so it's a little bit more transparent. And it's quite dark here. Back here as well. So we're just starting to add some just little bits of, dark, of a darker area within the cast shadow. So, you know, keeping some of the lighter stuff I had earlier exposed. There's almost no paint on my brush now. But I can just darken some of those areas. Um, and I think that will do for the moment. I'm going to let that completely dry now. And uh, you know, once that's done, then I'll come in with my interactive acrylics. If you're wondering about this chap here who's missing his hind legs, I plan on um, cropping the painting about there so that this one on the left and this one on the right are just kind of peeking into frame. Um, but, you know, we'll see how, how that goes. All right, well, the painting of conventional acrylic is completely dry now. So I've switched to my interactive acrylics. So I've got tinting white, permanent alizarin crimson, cadmium yellow deep, ultramarine blue, and some burnt umber. And so my next step is using this little half inch flat brush. I'm just gonna refine some of the general modeling that I've got. Um, on the cattle you know one two three four so i'm going to keep working probably going to leave the background for the most part as it is but i'm going to keep working on the animals and bring them up to the same level of modeling at the moment so my first step is going to be to start to add some slightly brighter highlights so with that in mind i'm getting some of the ultramarine blue and a little bit of the tinting white A little bit more. And I think I'm just going to add just a touch of the burnt umber. And I'm doing that so that the highlight colour I'm mixing, it's not just a pure, pure blue. It's gone. The, the burnt umber will neutralise it a little bit. So it'll just be a little bit more of a grey to this blue highlight. Now, I can spray water on the painting without fear of my underlying work having gone anywhere and then squinting at my reference I can begin to add some highlights now I'm quite perhaps well perhaps not surprisingly with hindsight that highlight isn't light enough and the reason it looked lighter on my palette is obviously I'm using a black palette so I can add a little bit more tinting white to the mixture and let's see if that improves things. And that's a bit more like it. So let's add some highlight there. There's another little dash in there. And in fact, uh, it's quite light actually on the side of this animal's face. And then highlight comes down there to that little band of shadow that I, that I put in earlier and then it skips over a little bit to the left. There's a bit of a highlight over the eye 
and even on the ear there. A bit on the top of the head. And so, you know, what I'm doing is by the reason I sprayed the surface of the underpainting with water is that it, it helps the interactives just glide across the paper a little better. And you tend to get some brush strokes being left in the paint that you apply, which is really helpful for painting animals which have, you know, hair or fur. And it also creates, so because you get these little frayed edges to the patches of paint that you put down, you also get lots of little brush lines, especially if you're using a slightly frayed brush like I am. And that helps to create just a little bit of a sense of 3D through the contours that are created. It's a, it's a technique I use quite a lot. I do mention it in quite a few of my videos, but um, yes, some things I feel are, are worth repeating because they're so important. And, and this is one in particular, I think is uh, very, very, just a powerful little technique. It's you know perhaps not that obvious when you first glance at a painting, but I think it does help add to the illusion quite a lot. OK, so now we'll move on to the nose of uh, this animal on the right here. Oh, actually, I've missed off a little highlight there on, on this chap. And a little flash of light on his nose there, too. Um, so back to the back to the guy on the right. So as I'm painting this highlight colour on, I can quite deliberately just go over the edge of some of the shadows I put down earlier. Or, or not, as I see fit. And it's just, it just helps to break up the rather hard edge of the conventional acrylic that I put down earlier. Now, you know, that can be a really cool stylized effect if you want a hard edge in your finished work but on other times it can be a little bit of a disadvantage because you know um, hard edges in reality are relatively rare I would say especially if you're dealing with something which is in general fairly rounded in nature uh, like an animal So adding this height, so, you know, before I just had pure ultramarine blue, if you remember, and then the very dark shadow colour. So immediately by adding a highlight colour, a third tone to the depiction of these animals, I'm automatically creating a more subtle sense of three dimensions than I had before, because before it was just, you know, uh, mid-tone and deep shadow. Now it's mid-tone, deep shadow and a little bit of highlight. So... So now we've got three levels of tone instead of two. And in addition to that, because I'm, of the way I'm applying the paint, little bits of the underlying darker tones will show through here and there. As I mentioned, I'm doing a little bit of overlapping of shadows and, and, their, ed and their edges. So there'll be little effects coming in there. So we're, we're probably creating something like, you know, if we don't think about it too deeply, probably about five different levels of tone. But but three are going to be the main levels. They're going to be three main levels. So really at the moment, although I'm obviously doing a painting of a group of four cattle, for the most part at this stage, I'm really just 
looking at the four animals as pretty close to just being a single entity. And a pattern of different tones, as, as I just mentioned in detail, dark, light and medium. But each of those patches of each of the three tones have a very distinct shape. And that's what I'm trying to put down on the paper at the moment, I'm trying to capture that array of shapes rather than worrying too much about the fact that I'm painting a, a steer as opposed to a horse or a pig or whatever. So it doesn't really matter too much what I'm painting. The essential technique at this early stage is pretty much the same. Now, having done that all the way across the painting, now I'm going to add a bit more tinting white into what remains of that patch of paint and some more of the ultramarine blue. And so now I'm going to use this as a brighter highlight colour. I haven't added any more of the burnt umber because I want this to be a little bit more of a pure blue. And what I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll again spray the surface of the painting with, with water because I want to get some automatic blending effects. So this time I'm going to start on the right, I think. And let's, let's put some on the neck here and see what that looks like. I'm getting quite, getting quite a lot of glow off of the... painting just there so having trouble gauging whether I've got it right or not so let's go over to this animal where there's less reflection off the wet surface oh it's not too bad actually it's not too far off what I wanted so what I'm doing now is going back through and looking at each of those highlight areas that I put down a moment ago and I'm thinking well within that patch of light, are there any areas which could, you know, do with being lightened a little bit more? So it's not a major adjustment that I've that I've done here. It's fairly subtle. But if I look at this animal here, for example, the bridge of the nose and the left hand side of the forehead are considerably lighter than the right hand than the right hand side is. And also along this ridge of highlight. It's a little bit narrower, really. So for now I can um, note that in my painting by just putting a narrow highlight along the rather broad highlight that I had there to begin with.
So now I can go, the, the painting's dried a little bit now, so I can see a little better what I'm up to on the right hand side here. I need to adjust my lights really, but um, I'll make do for now. Okay, so, and for that new highlight colour, that will suffice, I think. Now, pretty much everything I've put down on the animals has been based on blue so far. So it's all very cool in terms of colour, temperature. So now, when we look at the, the hides of these animals, they've definitely got some orangey-brown reflected on their coats. So I've just grabbed a little bit of the cad yellow deep in some of the alizarin and I've mixed that together. I'm just going to add a touch of the the blue to again get it a little bit more towards the brown. And that's looking fairly bright on my palette um, but I think it might be okay. So once again come in with the the water to keep things nice and damp and let's start with a little patch of orange we've got here on this guy and that's working reasonably well and then the next area is over on the side of the animal here I put that color down a little heavier than I intended to so I just need to reduce the pressure between the brush and the, the paper because what I want to achieve is just sort of skimming the, the tips of the bristles over the surface of the painting and because the paint's damp and I'm using interactives again I'm going to get some automatic blending going on and that's generally speaking is going to be give me more of an interesting effect than if I just slap it on um, and again, I'm keeping in mind the contours of the surface. And if I, you know, if I um, inadvertently mix some of this warm colour into my pale blue highlights, in this case, that's going to be okay because I'm just going to get a slightly different brown than you know I, I would perhaps expect, but that will be in reasonable keeping. Uh, in terms of what's actually going on in reality. So it's not like I'll suddenly get a vibrant pink or anything like that. So, you know, I can kind of get away with it. OK, so having done that on that animal second from the right, let's add a little bit more blue to that same colour. And a little bit more of the red and we'll perhaps add just a touch of white just get a little bit of water into that paint and then we'll having changed the color we'll add some warmer kind of mid-tone This next animal. So I'm constantly looking to improve what I've done before, either by 
you know, correcting a line or a shape of a patch of tone, or by simply leaving un, un, uh, unmodified something that I feel is working. But so that's quite nice. I think I've got quite a warm orange here, then some reddish shadow, and then I've gone to purple here. So that, that's quite nice, I feel. I'm going to add a little bit more blue to the mix to go for a bluer purple. And then we'll go over to this uh, animal on the on the far left. Now working loose in this way, you know, with a relatively large brush compared to the size of the features I'm painting, you do have to be a little bit careful not to lose the underlying work you've done, the, the drawing you've done, in other words so that you don't lose the structure of the animal's head. And that was beginning to happen with uh, this one on the left. But I think I've brought it back in the right direction reasonably well. And, you know, I can always come back and... Well, I will be coming back and to refine things further, uh, obviously, in the not-too-distant future. So I've got a very bluey purple, a reddish purple, and then a reddish orangey brown. I think what I'm going to try, you know, it's a little bit of a departure from reality, but I'm just going to try some pure alizarin crimson on the right hand animal and see what that looks like. So um, I just cleaned my brush out fairly, you know, not too thoroughly. So there might be a little bit of the purple left there. But nevertheless, let's try this pure alizarin and uh, see whether it looks like you know a disaster or something which might be quite interesting so let's let's drag some of that across there the thing is we don't want to look it to look like blood <laughs> that's the thing I'm not looking to create a you know a slaughter scene or a war scene here so i think that's pink enough though that it's okay because when I put it onto the underlying blue, because this colour is pretty translucent, um, it's, you know, it's going to give me a, a purple, basically, of some kind. So I'm not copying the animal too closely here. I'm just, you know, going with what I think will work, hopefully, reasonably well. OK, so I'm going to let that uh, dry for a little bit and then we'll come back in with a smaller brush. And while that's drying, I can take that brush and just run it through the water a little bit. So there's still a little bit of the alizarin on there. And I'll mix that into the blue, but I'll grab some of the yellow. And some of the blue. Get a bit more of that blue in there. going get pick up some of the purple and what I want to do is make some of these cast shadows 
uh, considerably darker. So let's see what that looks like. So that's not too bad a starting point. So I've just gone into the lighter patch of green to uh, vary the darkness of the shadow a little bit. back into the darker purpley browny colour I had where things are really in quite deep shadow here then we'll go lighter again Add a little bit of white to the, the paler green. All right, well, having added some extra tone to the shadows, let's start working on the head of one of the main animals. So I'm just putting some ultramarine blue into that little bit of alizarin I had from earlier. And I'm using a filbert brush now, so it's quite a bit smaller. A little bit of the yellow, and so that's gone to a green. So I need a bit more of the alizarin. Okay, and then I'm going to keep a little bit of that on my brush and mix it into a lot of the ultramarine blue. And let's see what this looks like when we put it down onto the head of this animal. So that's created quite a dark brown, so that's not too bad for what I'm after. But I think what I'll do is add a little bit of white to that. There we go. So now what I'm doing is just softening some of those very, very strong shadows that I've got on the face here. So so again, I'm looking at the, the head as a whole and just trying to pick out areas where Think this new colour and tone will be appropriate.
and then I can also use this color to begin to refine the shape around the mouth and nose. Having done that, I can now add a little bit more of the tinting white to that same colour. And then we can begin to pull out and refine some of the highlights. So what I did just then was rather than draw the nostril, in other words, rather than draw the dark hole of the nostril, I just drew the little highlights which surrounded and defined the shape of the nostril. Now the eye is very, very much in shadow, but we can just hint at a subtle highlight there. So we've begun to refine the head here. And I'll come back to that and do some more later, but let's just um, improve the shape of this leg. And I need to um, trim a little bit off the right hand side of that leg, but I'll do that later on. So we'll now move across to the animal on the right. And we'll give this guy a similar treatment in terms of improving the modeling that I did to the previous steer. So softening the harshness of some of these shadows. And at the same time, You 
you know, just pulling, you know, strengthening some line work, which has got a little bit lost or perhaps wasn't there at all, you know, from the beginning of the painting. So just refining the shape of the animal's head, basically, so that it looks as much uh, like a part of the herd as we can get it to be. So back to my highlight colour now. And for the moment that will suffice in terms of the refinement of the heads of those two animals. Well, I actually left the painting for a few days to let things, you know, completely dry. Not, not that it takes that long, but um, just wanted to make sure everything was totally dry and have a think about what to do next. And what I'm going to do is swi whoops, switch to a round, small round brush that I've got here. And I've got a mix of ultramarine blue and burnt umber on here to create what is pretty close to a black. And I'm just going to work around the painting, tidying up some of the lines. And also, obviously, with this dark colour, that's going to allow me to put in some really dark shadows where they're needed. So, for example, this nostril, the shape needs to be refined a little bit. And there's a very dark shadow within the majority of that nostril and then it's quite a dark edge to the nose there and then just along here as well and then the shadow under the under the head just needs it doesn't need to be dark everywhere but there are definitely areas which are paler than I would like but in general I am pretty happy with the way the color combinations are working you know so they're certainly not hyper realistic but um, I just like the color combos and the way it's worked out so for the most part, I'm going to leave the bulk of the brushwork untouched. Now, when it comes to the leg here, the it's a little bit too chunky, uh, not you know, to use a technical term. So um, what I'm going to do is just refine the drawing there on this uh, right hand side. And then I'll come back in a bit and fix. Uh, the background in that area. We'll do something similar on the left. Switching back to the right. And as I say, I will come back later, sort out the rest of that. Could do with a couple of little shadows just on the tufty part of the hair up here.
and I'm also going to darken this this uh, animal here so that the the head of this one stands out a little more that height that blue highlight I've got there just want that to pop a little more and make sure the line of the head is clearly defined and with that in mind I'm also going to just darken the foot of that animal back there but not too not too heavily so just smudging that with a damp finger okay and while we've got this uh, near black on the brush we can move across to this animal here as well and you know I mean I've barely painted the eye so far so I've got some colors down already which are going to kind of help me but just a little bit of shadow in the right spot is going to help define that the ear here needs to be much darker. And again, I can just adjust the shape. We'll darken the top left of the head. Again, just tidy up the, the shape of the shadow within the ear. Now the eye on the other side of the head is pretty much obscured in shadow in my photo, but I'm going to include it, but keep it pretty, pretty subdued. And then there's quite a deep shadow here on the nose. I'm just going to hint at that. I don't want to go into too much detail, but there is some dark shadow on the side of the head here as well. And we need a nostril. So we can add that and then another one on the left as well. And again, the legs, the shape of the legs just needs to be just tidied up a little bit. Although a little bit of, of a sense of confusion with the legs when you've got groups of cattle, that, that can sometimes work quite well, even if you don't explicitly paint in every limb. You can sometimes get away with a surprising amount of... Um, uncertainty in terms of what you've put down on the paper because it's kind of all of a it's such a complicated mix of limbs that your, your brain can't handle it when you look at it so it's sort of um, if the legs don't always exactly join up really you need more animals than I've got here so which is why which is why I've taken a bit more care but if you if you're painting sort of 10 or 12 all huddled around each other you can sometimes you know there are 12 animals and they're meant to be 48 limbs. You can sometimes get away with painting something like, you know, 35 legs or something like that. And it, it still looks OK. If you do it in the right way. OK, so obviously we've now moved over to this uh, steer on the left of the painting. And again, I just want to put an indication of the eye. So with dark animals like this on a, on a bright day, the, you know, there's often very little of the eye showing really. It's not, you know, it's, it's in pretty heavy shadow, but there is an eye shaped shadow there, which obviously, you know, makes things look reasonably uh, correct. And again, we need a nostril. And what I'll be doing in just a little bit is I'll be coming back in with some lighter colours to pick out some of the brighter highlights. So then finally, we need to go over to this animal on the far right of the painting. So again, much of what I do here will be trying to replicate my reference. 
maybe sort of 50 percent maybe maybe less and then much of what i do will be you know about what's going to work for the painting as a whole regardless of what's going on in reality so So again, a dark patch there for the eye. I'll probably come back with a little highlight in the eye, a subdued highlight, but uh, there will be one nonetheless. Shadow for the nostril again. And again, I just want to pick out just a little bit the line of the the head here so that you know it's sort of clear what's going on i do quite like the way the patches of paint kind of merge into one but uh, i still i still want some distinction between the the different animals it's a darker line of shadow there under the neck some more along there too under the jaw and of course if at any stage you know I feel some of the edges that I'm putting down here are a little too hard because I've got the interactive acrylics I can just spray those with water and uh, you know I can just soften things where I see fit now there's quite a dark bit of shadow well let's just change the camera angle for you There we go. Um, so it's quite a dark bit of shadow up here as well. I'll put a, a little lick along there. And again, just want to check that I've got the shape of the legs to be reasonably convincing. So I'm going to darken the, the shadow. Oh, change the camera again. So I'm going to dark. I've just darkened the shadow there, which I think was still on camera. But I want to add a bit more. on the upper part of the leg as I just did. I want to keep some of the some of the red that's showing even though it's not you know totally accurate. I quite like the way that colour works if for this part of the painting. But then we'll darken and refine the shape of the lower leg here. And then where, where it disappears into the grass, I'm just going to leave that as it is. And then the other leg needs to be some shadow coming down here. I mean, that's, that's more or less out of frame, but... Uh, I think that's helped the situation on the whole. So next I want to add some highlights and I'm going to start with this animal here and I want the edges to be fairly soft that I, that I put down for these. I've got some tinting white and ultramarine, ultramarine blue on my same round brush that I had before. I gave the brush a thorough clean and I'm just putting in some little, rather than do a continuous line, I'm kind of keeping going with this contours idea. And just putting in some little arcs of highlight there and I, I won't know the exact effect of those until the paint fully dries back but my hope is that it's going to help to capture some of the subtle highlights you get you know on these 
you know, black coated animals, even though I've painted them as kind of dark blue, purple and, uh, you know, brown. So I put a little bit on the edge of the ear there as well. And then what I may resort to later is switching to the titanium white, which is more opaque, just to pop, make some of the uh, the brightest highlights pop a bit more. Now I just misted some water over the animal on the left here. So again, we'll add some of these fairly soft highlights to yeah you know, hopefully what i'm doing here is beginning to create a sense of uh, sheen on the animal's coat but obviously depicted in in my way it's quite a bright highlight above the nostril on the right and there's also a little bit below the nostril opening as well and a little touch above the other nostril. And then this bit here will be a little bit brighter. And up here as well. And a little, little line going along the top of the back. Put a touch on that knee. That's probably enough for that one, I think. So let's move on to um, what I'm what I, I, don't, I don't know if I've said, but in, in my head, I've sort of, I'm sort of considering this the main animal. I don't know why, I guess, because this one's the most central. So again, we'll do a little flick there and there. Now I haven't sprayed the um, the painting with water in this particular area. And I, I, at the moment, I'm quite happy with these particular highlights going down with a little bit of a harder edge. Just sort of makes the the treatment of the animals slightly different. And the paint on my palette has started to dry out just a little bit. So really, I'm, I'm doing, you know, almost a little bit of dry brush now. Um, so that's adding a little bit of texture to the highlight that I'm putting down. And, and that can also give you a sort of glistening effect. Now I've just uh, picked up what's left of that uh, pale blue on my half inch flat brush because I, ju I just realized a little bit of a uh, more um, 
um, bowl, bowl treatment, I guess is the easiest way to put it, uh, on the head of this animal. A bit of dry brush, I think, is going to work quite well. And I'm deliberately carrying this highlight across the boundary of the pale blue and the purple to kind of soften that boundary just a little bit. And, you know, I've barely got any paint on the palette. But again, I'm going to do the same thing over here. So it's not much, but I think it has helped a little bit. So I've switched to my filbert now, and I'm just coming in with a mix of the ultramarine blue and the cadmium yellow deep. And I'm just using that, as you can see, to add to this shadow that's uh, there around the leg. Because uh, uh, if you remember, I refined that shadow uh, sorry, the leg shape earlier. So I just need to do that. Um, and while I'm about it, I can put some of that in here so that it's not too jarring an addition to the shadow colours that I've got in place already. And I'm going to add some highlights to this grass as well in a bit. Um, and in fact, I can kind of start doing that now. So let's grab some of the tinting white. Put quite a lot of tinting white mixed in with what's still on my brush and what I'll do is I've got to come back in a minute and, and further refine the shape of that leg but what I can do is add a little bit of a highlight on some of the grass around the, the foot of the animal there. It's not that bright a highlight at the moment but uh, you know for the moment it's it's okay. Do a little bit over here as well. get too fiddly just a few patches of a brighter color and then now I need to mix up a really pale color to to kind of cover some of this dark paint I've got here just to, to slim this leg down Now I'm going to come to this uh, leg as mentioned in just a second. In general I'm happy with the the very very loose treatment that I've got going on in the background. Yeah, that was the first layer of paint pretty much. Um, I'm less happy even though I, I was aware of this drip um, you know, when it happened. Uh, I, don't, I don't mind that one but for some reason this one's bugging me so I'm just coming in with some pure titanium white. Now I switched to titanium white because it's more opaque than the tinting white, so I've got a better chance of covering that up a little bit. Um, now, I've deliberately put more paint on here at the end than I did here, and then I increased, I went to somewhere in between here, so that it's not, I'm not trying to block it out completely, I just want to soften the effect. So now, with that in mind, I do want a little bit of colour in, in the correction I put down around this leg. So... I've added a little bit of the cad yellow deep to that titanium white. And just kind of just add a bit more white to, to that. And I really actually quite like the warmth. It's almost a very pale orange that um, this is bringing to the picture. So I'll do my correction on this side as well. And then what we'll do is use that, even though it doesn't really represent reality, I'm going to use that for a few highlights. I can't, rem can't remember if I said, but um, I'm on my little filbert brush here. So it's, it's larger than the little round I was using, but obviously much smaller than the half inch flat. And yeah, that's working quite well, actually. So I'm going to add a bit of that there. Oh, got a bit of a lump of paint there for some reason. Let's get, come on. There we go. Um, so we'll put a flash of that down there and across there. 
and I'm just going to work my way around the painting to add these little blips of a warmer highlight. And as I do that, I'm quite happy for some of the early watercolour marker lines to remain visible, but um, I'm going to just break those up where I see fit as well, so that they're a little less, uh, perhaps a little less intrusive than they, than they currently are. But as I say, I, I don't mind them being there. I'll continue some of those highlight patches into the areas of the painting, which are, you know, either barely coated in paint or not coated. And then I've, I've always had in mind for this painting, I wanted to include different little blips of, of quite bright, colourful highlights. Um, I hadn't planned to use this colour, but I'm now thinking it might work quite well. I'm not going to use it on every animal, but um, let's just have a think where that might work. So I think a little touch here. Oh, that might be a bit too much. Let's, uh, yeah, OK. So I lifted off most of that with my with my fingers and that's probably a good thing I think but um, mm, no I'm hesitating now I think if I think what I'm going to do is make a darker version of it and use it on this animal here so I'm going to grab some more of the cad yellow and perhaps a little bit of the alizarin and let's go more towards the orange I think that will be better. Yeah, I quite like that. So just a few little touches of warmth, you know, really pop against the, the otherwise cool palette that we've got going on here. Um, I'm just going to put a little bit there. And we'll perhaps put a little bit along the top of the neck. then let's put just a little couple of touches zigzagging across that boundary between the dark red and the, the pale blue. Continue that theme on a couple of other areas of the animal's hide. Um, let's put a little, just a little touch up there. A little flash on the ear and on the nose. And again, it's not really in keeping with what's there, but a little touch under the eye. That didn't land quite where I intended it to, that little touch of colour, but I think I've, I think it works OK. So the thing with this little filbert brush is, as you hopefully you can see, even though it's quite a, a fairly, you know, it's not a, the tiniest brush in the world, but because it's flat, I can slice the edge of the brush across the surface of the painting. You can get really quite a fine line if you do it in a, you know, a delicate way. I 
that like that a bit. So we'll soften, soften that. Um, let's put a little flash there. And then I think what I will do again is I'll just add some little licks of this same colour. You know, perhaps they're little flowers or something. But uh, I'll just dot some of that. In the foreground so that again there's a little bit of harmony in terms of the colours used as, as, as your eye kind of scans its way across the painting. Now there are edges of the animals which are really quite sketchy in nature. You know some of the watercolour marker is showing through, some of the brushwork is like a little ragged here and I really quite like that effect. There's another bit there so I'm, I'm happy with that. What I'm less happy with is these couple of areas here on this animal. I don't think there are any others where there's a little bit of the kind of the white of the paper or the pale first coat of, of paint showing through. So what I've done now is just switch to my clean filbert brush and this is just pure ultramarine blue which I'm um, just going, going to dilute a little bit with a spray of water and just want to, you know, glaze over. So it's probably, I don't know how it's looking on camera, but it's perhaps standing out a bit more than I would like at the moment. But when that dries back, you know, that should um, blend in quite nicely. So it's just to, you know, make sure the animal looks solid. There's another bit of pale, a little pale area there. Um, so that's cool. And then here as well. And then under the jaw here, there's those little bits of white showing, which aren't really helping things very much. A bit of uh, extra shadow in there I can add. And then I've got this blue on the brush, so we need to give this animal here a bit more of, I mean, the eye is very much in, sh in shadow, but I can use that ultramarine on top of the very dark color I used earlier to put in a little bit of an upper lid and a little bit of a of a lower lid there and then we'll add a little bit of the tinting white um, to then make that a little bit lighter so that animal's actually got an eye now. I'm going to use this same blue to adjust the highlight in the eye of the animal there. We'll put a little touch of a highlight in on that one and on that one. I mean these are really subtle little highlights. They're not they're barely visible really unless uh, you're pretty close up but it, um, you know it's appropriate for the for the lighting conditions in this particular case. Now um, there are a couple of areas where I can use some slightly brighter highlights again. So in particular, there's quite a bright highlight over this nostril here. So this is the titanium white now with a little bit of that same ultramarine blue that I was using before. And there's a little bit of light catching there at the bottom of the nostril. So that probably looks almost pure white. Um, now that it's on the painting, but there is a little bit of blue in there. Same over here. Okay, and then I may as well keep going with just a few. Whoops, subtle touches. So that, fir that first little dab of paint was a a bit too uh, bigger than I meant to put down, but um, it's okay, I think. So what I've been doing, hopefully, um, as you've been able to see over the last few minutes, is I've been, you know, adding different tones to the highlights I put down and different colours. So you, you put down a patch of highlight to describe the general highlight area, and then within that patch of colour, you can add areas which are 
darker or lighter. And that you know, tends to mirror reality you know, a little better than if you just put down a solid swathe of a single colour. Now, obviously, you know, this painting you know, doesn't mimic reality in many, many ways. But nevertheless, you can still kind of in, in your own world where you're creating your own rules, you can still follow the kind of general rules of the road, as it were. You don't have to um, just go wild and do, you know, do absolutely anything. You've got to have a little bit of a uh, bit of logic. It's a bit like when you watch Star Wars, um, you know, it's all made up. But there is a kind of weird logic to it that they've thought about. And then I've just added a little bit more blue to the um, to the same color. Just going to add an even smaller, brighter highlight to the eyes within the highlight that I've put in earlier. And then what I also want to do, I think, is just like I did earlier, uh, I'm going to mix a bit more of the titanium white into that colour, though. I'm going to put a few of those just little touches of that same colour. You know, in the foreground. So, for example, when I put it down there of that pale patch of uh, yellow it, or, or, you know, white, then it looks blue. But if I put it on this darker region, then it looks almost white. Now I've just momentarily switched back to a, a conventional acrylic. This is all my interactives up here. This is conventional on the left and a bigger brush back to the fluorescent yellow that I used right at the beginning of the painting. I just kind of think I, if I put a patch over here, I'm hoping it's going to help you know, add to the sense of heat. Although the bleached out white of the of the foreground also helps. So I'm just going to scumble in some of that. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I don't think it's you know made things worse, but um, I don't think I want to add too much more. So let's just put a lick down here. Just change the camera angle for you. Whoops, there we go. Um, yeah, not sure how I feel about that. So I think I'm going to, uh, it's not interactive, so this, this it may not uh, come off the page very well, but uh, if I'm quick before it dries too heavily, I can lift off. It dries too heavily dry, <laughs> before it dries too completely. Um, I can lift off some of that with a damp paper towel and I think the problem I was having with it was I, I put down too opaque a patch of paint so now that I've lifted off most of it I quite like the addition uh, of that fluorescence but um, it was a bit too heavy in contrast with the lightness of touch that's going on elsewhere so I think that's pretty much done.